Hello everyone, welcome to the Micon Podcast. I'm Shenwa Kimbaloe. This podcast, as you may know, is an open platform for individuals from all walks of life who sit with me here in the studio, sometimes joined virtually, to share their perspectives on issues that matter, not only to them, but also to a larger number of the Nigerian populace. And sometimes we talk global issue as long as it pertains or affects the Nigerian people. The Micon Podcast runs independently from my weekday show on China Television, which is Politics Today, 7 p.m. every weekday, and the weekend edition, Sunday Politics, 8 p.m. In just a few days, President Bola Tenumbu will mark his first year in office. What this means is subsidy is gone, is almost a year. You remember that it was on the 29th of May 2023 that he made that historic statement, which is now a, a fundamental matter on the heart of his governance. Almost a year. Now, this has been a significant theme of the past year. Now, have you taken the time to evaluate the president's performance during this period, or is the reality too overwhelming making such an assessment seem futile as we approach this one-year mark? What policies and actions have come to define President Tunubu's administration? I mean, there are metrics, measurable ones that uh, one can use in measuring how far they've gone. But one question an average Nigerian would ask is, am I better off since this administration began or am I seeing the ray of hope? Now to some specifics, everyone. The president and his team may argue that efforts at attracting foreign investment and stabilizing the economy may take some time. Yes, sometimes. That's the reality. They've also put forward their efforts in targeted economic relief and benefits like grants, education loans, food and fertilizer distribution, cash transfers, health insurance, and consumer credit. But how soon can Nigerians expect to see the benefits of these policies? What are the most unbiased and objective ways to assess the government's performance over the last year? So tonight, we get to, uh, into the heart of the matter and we dissect. It's you and I today. The mic is on. Of course, we we'll allow my guest on the, uh, this edition to speak to uh, first last year from a lawyer and associate commentator, Mr. Liberos Oshoma, who joins us live virtually from Lagos. Thank you so much, Mr. Oshoma, for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Sean. My pleasure, always. Right. Uh, l let me meet, because uh, you, have been, you are living in Nigeria, so you understand. Um, you, you, you buy tomatoes, that is if you cook yourself. Um, you buy petrol into your, into your car. Um, uh, you're thinking of uh, changing your vehicle to CNG. Uh, that seems to be the in thing because it saves you some money. Um, you also are affected by school fees, inflation figures. A lot of things are happening in this country. But let me ask you, let's begin this conversation. Mr. Oshoma, if you, not particularly on your own self, looking at May 28th, midnight of May 29th, and one minute before President Bola Tinubu took over office, would you say in the last one year, Nigeria is better off than Buhari left it? <laughs> uh, so, when um, you remind me of Buhari, you remind me of disaster. Uh, let me start by saying that um, it took the selfishness of Obasanjo to give us um, a clueless Jonathan that now made us go 30 years backward to bring an inept Buhari and now we are stuck with a Milokon um, who tries to you know replicate a micro modern you know in a micro in a macro environment I will um, start by benchmarking this administration, you know, with three indices. The first is what, you know, they propounded when they were in opposition. You know, the second one is um, the 
uh, government, the APC and Buhari government that they brought upon us, and um, the promises that Buhari made. Lastly, the disaster that Buhari became that they know during campaign, and they promised to correct. Uh, and so I'll start with the first one show quickly. When APC, Tinubu and Co were in opposition, starting from the days of Pronaco, they knew the problems of this country and they knew every solution to the problem. And one of those solutions, they told us that our constitution, in fact, you remember, show, remember the Pronaco conference in uh, Magudo and they came up with a constitution, uh, a model constitution, talking about um, how we need to go back to the 1963 constitution, how we need to restructure this country, fiscal federalism, resource control, you know, and they even, it was, it, a lot of people don't know this, it was the ACN in opposition that actually, you know, propounded this geopolitical zone in the country. So one expected that, you know, with um, the disaster that Gulag Jonathan administration became, sharing money with uh, transformation agenda of Nigeria, that a Buhari who they claimed knew it all, who they claimed was an anti-corruption general, would come fighting insecurity and then save money and put restructure the country and put it on a proper footing. But unfortunately, Buhari came and went to sleep. They set up a committee headed by uh, El Rufai to, to look at um, how to restructure this country and at the end of the day, that document is still gathering dust in the shed wherever they kept it. And then came the election and then Tinubu knowing the disaster that Buhari was, said, okay, yes, I'll continue from where Buhari stopped. We'll create reforms. We'll strengthen the Naira. We'll ensure that, um, you know, subsidy will grow, but the economy will grow. But even the white promise on the day of inauguration that they had money, they don't need our money, that they don't need our money. And I expected, immediately after that statement was made, we saw them buy bulletproof cars in an economy where there is no money. Few weeks into, few months into that, we saw the Ministry of uh, Humanitarian Disaster, uh, you know, wreck a heavy disaster on Anaya and then um, the the sneeze that greeted that ministry, you know, in some palliative that we consistently talked about. So when you benchmark all of this against the current reality, what we are facing now, the fact that, like you said, subsidy is gone, we have banned A. We have band B, band C, and band D in terms of power supply. We also now the insecurity. We come to embrace insecurity as um, a common phenomenon now that it has become so. It has become so common that. So can you hear me? I can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, that it has become so common now that uh, kidnapping is a thing that we have so embraced that it happens, we just gloss over it. You know, people are kidnapped daily in in, um, in the north, and bandits are running riot, as if, you know, banditry has become, you know, an occupation now that we should just embrace. Today, we talk about um, palliative that actually gets to nobody. We talk about, um, recently, we're just recovering from another free queue. This, we had pipelines that were built for us more than 50 years ago, and 50 years after, we cannot maintain those pipelines. We can't even guard them. You know, that we are using manual in this day and age, where people are talking about AI, but using manual uh, technology, can be standard to protect our pipeline. And so, we can't even produce enough crude that will guarantee, you know, enough forest for us. So, uh, 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 Naira is drilling oil. That you can't even, de 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 you can't plan because you can't determine the price, you, you know. So, all of this, when you look at the one year in office, so really, you ask yourself, really, um, yes, I can't say it's all, um, it's all doom. Uh, for the first time, you have a, a, a government where people complain. You know, they introduce a policy, people will complain, and then they say they suspend. But whether that policy will be suspended forever is another thing, just like the cyber security levy. And a com an, a, an economy that is already down, you are still introducing taxes and levies. You know, so it's not all doom, but from what we see, 
it is obvious that until until we restructure this country, we will we'll go back to the same solution they told us when they were in opposition, fiscal federalism and the rest. And then we now begin to focus on the smaller units. We will keep going around in circles like this. Every government will, will come, promise seven and eight, and at the end of the day, sell their uh, national assets to their cronies, while with the rest of us who continue to complain, as we bid our time to wait for some of us, some people to get into government, and begin to tell the rest of us that you will not understand. Okay, so That's my assessment generally. Great. So, I, I like you to mark this government because if we subject this assessment to an academic process, uh, of course, we, we will know that at the end of every year, there will be a GPA and at the end of the program, you, at, the, at the end of the day, you'll find a CGPA. Um, if you are to grade this government based on their promise, and they made specific promises in the manifesto, uh, they were, uh, some people will argue that mm -hmm. You know the hope agenda. Some people say, oh, they overreached themselves in this area. Oh, these areas are just perfect. These areas uh, are lackluster. But if you grade them from, uh, before we get deep into the conversation, I want you to grade this government. Uh, 10 being the highest, 1 being the lowest. Uh, how would you rate this government in the last one year? So I will, I will give you my reason for grading the government very low. I'll give you the reasons, you know. The when when Buhari when Buhari was a sitting office and Buhari said that um, the budget for subsidy was up until June. I was on a program with um, our very good friend Kazima Febwa, and both of us agreed that Buhari cannot be creating a policy for a government that is coming on board. And Tinubu needs to come study the subsidy regime how they can clean it up, what they can do, and then, because Nigerians are suffering, and you can't ask them why government is feeding facts, you can't ask them to pay more. But unfortunately, the uh, uh, chartered accountant that we expect will come on board would look at the process, sit down, take a look at um, what is on ground, he just went, boom, subsidy is gone. And that day he made that announcement, we, it's from that day to date, we have not even had consistent, I can't say consistent, you know, PMS supply in, in, in our gas station. So and the price say, is not even smiling. Would you say so that was that on one side? You would say that was a policy I'm, apocalypse. Yes, yes, it is. It is. I expected an incoming president to sit down, look at the books, at least make some effort on how do we clean up this. You know what the government did, show? They said, look, the subsidy regime is fraught with corruption and so as a government what is the essence of government the primary purpose of government is the security and welfare of the people how do you create welfare that the government shall fight corruption is one of his responsibilities government says oh because we can't fight corruption in the subsidy regime so now nigerians you have to suffer why do we pay for their fare we pay for private jet for them and so we can't fight it and then another thing the nmpc nmpc went to take three points 3.3 billion dollar loan from Afrozin Bank to show up the Naira. Naira was less than 1,000 dollar at that time when they took that loan. Where is the Naira today? And secondly, the instead of, rather than going into uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, trading with um, their commodity traders, they went and mortgage our food, future sale, forward sale. That to the extent that even our local refinery, when we say local, that we're talking about the Dangote refinery now, does not even have crude. Look, I can't assess our local crude because we sold all of them for what sale agreement. They told us that Potakot is uh, working. You know, what they did was to just flare the gas, uh, flare, uh, uh, use a pie gas to, to flare, you know, the fear. And then we thought that, oh, yes, our refinery is working. And now they're telling you there's no crude. You know, so when you put all of this together and also, coupled with the fact that recently the US came up with one policy that nobody really understands. So you have band A, band B, and bandits in terms of power distribution. And so when you put all of this together, you score the, the, the administration. If I give them two and a half over ten, I have tried. I've really, really tried. Monetary policy, naira to dollar. We we had um, uh, the uh, what do you call it? When they, they came they said they were not paying subsidy, they were not subsidizing the Naira. And so we saw it drop. 
all of a sudden, what is happening since that bubble was busted? We say, look, the government is actually subsidizing the Naira. The Naira is gradually climbing up again. So they are busy. EFCC is busy chasing, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, mm. uh, uh, the change on the street. Rather than sit down and look at how do we you know, create an economic policy, how do we encourage uh, production in the country that will enable us you know, end foreign uh, exchange? Is it the everyday health sector education as we struggling to, to 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 shut down health sector? Our president, anytime he goes abroad, the allegations that he goes for you know check up also in Paris, not even in Nigeria. Um, what else? Transportation is you know almost next to nothing. Can you imagine that we are celebrating today? Emirates returning to Nigeria. We're celebrating another national career returning to Nigeria in October. I, I, you know, so is it fight against corruption? Better I do what have become of better I do case. So if I show, I'm even my many months with 2.5 over 10. You know, so when you look at this, you, you will expect that the government will hold certain areas and say, okay, we are going to tackle this. And when we tackle this, the multiplying effect, is it on spending, government spending? As we speak, we would have expected that government would cut cost. The number of ministers is still you know, even higher than the previous one. Uh, and they all have essay to essay. And the saddest part of it is that while you are busy taxing the people, you budget 90 billion as subsidy for people to go on Hajj, a private religious uh, affair. Very soon, the Christians also will ask for theirs. It's not sharing palliative. I don't want to regurgitate this problem because they stare us in the face and they're multiplying. Today, I really want to look at what APC promised to do that they are not doing. So, so 2.5 and very, very magnanimous. That, that's failure. And uh, the, uh, any, I mean, if a student gets 2.5 over 10, the, that student might be at, at, at a, a disastrous position of possibly repeating the class. That's not a good but thing. But if, if the student is government, they will magnify that 2.5 and say, yes, when we came on board, it was zero. But at least give us, cut off, cut off some slack. We have uh, scored 2.5. So, so really, um, if you look at all of the indices, what was promised, what we are getting, and then the fact that you say, okay, we let us suffer this so that there will be light at the end of the tunnel. As I told you, so even the light has been destroyed at the end of the tunnel. So there is no end in sight to it. So after two years from now, we're going to be talking about uh, 2027 elections. Some people are already agitating and then, you know, fighting themselves for 2027, while we are yet to see the promises of 2023. So, um, it depends on the person from government that is looking at it, they can magnify 2.5 and say, yes, at least we did something. In terms of um, road construction, yes, we agree. The um, Calabar, uh, Lagos Calabar Super Highway, um, yes, it's a beautiful and fantastic innovation. I like it. But also, in Kosimili Kosu, let us also look at the existing roads. How well are we faring with the existing roads? What have we done with them? Um, Tinubu came on board, and we saw a lot of his Lagos boys, former commissioners, you know, elevated to minister, replicating the same Ikoyi economic policy, forgetting that it is not just, you know, an Ikoyi affair. You need to look at all angles, all indices. If, if you're in Lagos, where you have a lot of business and commercial activities, a lot of doing business, it's a different thing. But Nigeria, it's not like that. And then another thing is the governments are all sleeping. Nobody's holding them accountable. Uh, the government also, the federal government also is not holding them accountable. Everybody just there. What have we done in terms of constitutional amendment process that will guarantee that this problem is going to ease? There is nothing. What is the guarantee also show <laughs> excuse me, that the dollar will come down? What are the indices that a businessman can look at and say, yes, that between now and six months' time, government is going to earn more, and so there will be availability of forests. Do you know that show our OPEC quota for oil production was 2.5 million barrels per day? OPEC reduced it because we couldn't even produce 2 million barrels. They reduced it to 1.8 because we are producing 1.5. And then we're talking about um, pipeline vandalization. 
and that is the major product that runs the economy. We spent 1.2 billion dollars to revamp, revamp a 60,000 barrel per day uh, refinery when you that was produced that was constructed in the 60s. When you had a 120 barrel, 120 thousand barrel per day refinery that was produced in the 90s, both in Portaco. We're not discussing that one. All of that we're not talking about. I was talking about subsidies gone. Subsidies gone and your refineries are not working. Your pipeline. Do you know, Sean, that we have 20 depot, 20 depot across the Federation, NMPC depot across the Federation, because you are not supposed to truck products, whether crude or refined products, more than 250 meters. But today, how do you transport PMS from Lagos to Meduguri? Do you know the man hour that you would have lost? Because once you, 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 uh, what do you call it? You, um, drain oil from your terminal, you can pump to Kaduna, you can pump to all the terminal, all the, your depot. If it is refined, you can pump to all your depot and you have Wasimi, you have Atlas Cove, you have Bini depot, you have Ibadan depot, you have, them um, Stilajar depot, in all of these depot, but today, our pipelines are not working. So even even shown as I speak to you, even our indigenous and uh, indigenous uh, 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 producers are having to truck their crude, are buying badges, are buying badges to truck their crude. So a situation where somebody you pump, you pump um, one, let's say you pump one thousand liters, you you can you can say you can tell government at one thousand two that. You know, the 200 meters, uh, you know, got missing along the way as a result of pipeline vandalization. Why do you think that Dangote does not have, you know, pipelines to his refinery? They are using uh, vessels, badges to, 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 to ferry crude. Because we have not been able to show that capacity to maintain uh, our pipeline. So what is our policy in that regard to show that we in, uh, we will be able to increase you know, our capacity in terms of production. Nothing. So when people tell me, oh, look, this government will put policy in place, and I ask, show me the policy. Nobody has been able to show me a policy that will guarantee that two years, three years from now, things will increase. Nothing. All right. Let me bring in uh, yet another perspective. I'm being joined by Mr. Dominic Alancha. He's a member of the APC. Thank you so much indeed, Mr. Alancha, for your time today. Thank you. You, you heard Mr. Oshoma's assessment. He's graded, and in fact, he's regretting that he graded this government to uh, 2.5 over 10. Uh, he said he's being magnanimous to have graded or rated this government to and a half over 10. He thinks that this government, our President Tunubu, has performed woefully and poorly in the last one year. Well, um, he has his opinion, and uh, we all have our opinions. Nigerians also have their opinion. If you go to the street today and you ask Nigerians, oh. you know, their opinion about this government, they have one or two things to tell you, either positively or negatively. But we are here today to look at, you know, to assess the performance of this government from May 2023 till date. And uh, you will agree with me, for us to be able to have a proper perspective on, you know, assessing this government, we really, really need to look at where the economy was, the state, you know, the country was when uh, President uh, Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, took over from the previous administration. And you will agree with me that uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu inherited or uh, took over a battered economy he took over a, an economy that was uh, uh, in a state of coma, you know, and uh, he really need to do, you know, uh, put policies in place that will revive the economy. And one of the things that were, you know, very, you know, worrisome, you know, bothersome to this economy when he took over was our total debt, you know, our public uh, debt, both foreign and local. The second thing is the fuel subsidy regime, which to me, it was unsustainable. You see, people will say that Tinubu ought to have sat down or they, would have, they were blaming uh, President, uh, uh, former President Muhammadu Buhari for saying that the subsidy regime will end in June. 
2023. He didn't announce it. He the budget only informed us that, you know, from June of 2023 there was no provision for you know subsidy. But Bola Ahmed Tinubu, you know, because he's a man of action, he came and immediately announced that the subsidy regime has ended with his government. Mm -hmm. Now, this subsidy regime that he ends for me is commendable for the political will and the courage to do that. Now, what did he do? Because all we are talking about today, what Nigerians are going through today, you know, they are suffering today, is as a result of that subsidy removal. Because that subsidy to me was sapping the blood of this economy. Would you say that that singular decision that some have said it was a disastrous <coughs> manner in which it has been done, Yes, it, it was a needed action or a needed decision to be made by any government, albeit the difficulty and the political difficulty that the, any government would have found itself in taking that decision. But in the manner in which President Tinubu made that decision, would you say that was an error of judgment in times of timing? No, there was no error at all. For me, it was a decision that was needed. Any government in place ought to have taken such decision. But the doctors will tell you that uh, you need an operation, but they will tell you what time that operation can he happen. Was, he was elected in, you know, uh, I think in February. You know, he, so he had about two, three months. That is why he had the manifestos. That is why he went about campaigning, telling Nigerians what he's going to do. But does it look budget. like there, there, so there, 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 there were there plans to, because there are those who believe that the subsidy remover and the manner in which uh, the buffers that were not there and they're not the grants that were not prepared for <laughs> cabinet members to push that policy that was the beginning of the problem that we so, see on ourselves today so i agree with you so that quickly, was, please. Was the let me say something of what we found ourselves today but it was a needed decision that need to be taken and president bola ahmed Tinubu was so courageous enough he summoned the political courage to take that well, decision well, well, so so he took that decision. It was in good faith. And that is why today, what we should be looking at is the interventions <coughs> after taking that decisions that he rolled out, you know, in order to help the economy. And you will agree <laughs> with me, Shehu, that look, if he had not taken that decision, believe me, Nigeria economy would have crumbled. Because, like I said, the subsidy regime was sapping, was parasitic. Uh, how, how much how, how on, much do you mean, wait, yeah yeah so just a moment, um mr Schumann, just a moment l l let's analyze it I, I, and i don't want to uh in governance you know an appraiser of governance has to do with the uh, a lot of the times you might take the most perfect decision but how does the system receive those kind of decisions because it will impact on the lives of the people and that's why those who are in government will tell you that there might be a, a timing issue with the pro with the policy of president Balatinobu. yes it, it was it was good just a moment mr shoma yes it was good and um, in fact there are those who believe that all if article had won he would have taken the same decision. Taken same if Peter Obi had won, he would, he would have, have taken, taken the same decision. But what should they have done differently in the manner and the approach? And I'd like to ask you, how much is Nigeria paying for subsidy in the first place? When people keep saying it will crumble the Nigerian economy, I don't know. What is the percentage of the subsidy payment that will crumble the Nigerian economy? Because we need to be analytical and we need to know what the figures are saying. Yeah, I cannot tell you the figures right now, but the truth of the matter is that the subsidy regime was unsustainable. And the good thing is that the president had end that regime. So going forward, we should begin to look at the positive aspect of that economy. And look, like you said, the removal, that decision came with a lot of pain. That decision came with a lot of negative impact. But in the long run, okay, what are we expecting? Yeah. And I like to, we are Mr. Shoma, I'll bring you in just in a moment. I like to, uh, one thing that a lot of people have created this government to do, mm -hmm. is that it does look like this government is very reactive to the 
uh, to the feelings of Nigerians when there is a clamor, uh, cyber security levy, they got the, a lot of clamor agitation. It was suspended when they uh, went ahead to say the student loan will commence. They saw that a lot of uh, things were untidy in the law. They went back to the National Assembly. They amended it. It will, it will soon commence. There are a lot of decisions uh, that this government has taken. There are a lot of people who will give credit that it is not a dictatorial government in terms of making decisions. And when it sees that there are errors, Absolutely. they will come back. But Absolutely. it does also say something that this government looks like a lackluster a flip-flopping government that takes a decision that doesn't think carefully about doesn't buffer doesn't create any buffer doesn't create any pillars to push the decision takes a decision and at the end of the day realizes that it was a disastrous decision that subsidy that won't go there are those who have said analysts who have said nigeria is the paid subsidy look let me tell you you see some of these decisions that you know uh, the president has reversed we need to understand from beginning the president told us that there is need to expand the tax uh, net in order for us to generate more tax so that it can be de deployed into you know certain areas that will service the need of the people or the need of citizens you know uh, generally so there is nothing disastrous about you know some of those decisions but rather we should commend mr president for listening to nigeria if nigerians said that this decision for example, the decision to you know to 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 to, to reverse the cyber security levy. If Nigerians said that you know it doesn't go down well with them, and the pres the president listening to them, what is wrong about that? That is a listening president, and that shows that it's not a dictatorial president that will just come out with a policy, you know, and then you know. Uh, you don't think that this government looks like, like a flip flopper, a no, government no, that doesn't no, really no, have its acts together? No, that no, I can list that ten is, policy that decisions. Is, that is, that is, that is, flip flopping, they'll go that uh, into is town the beauty, with decision. That is, isn't that the beauty of democracy? But that is a failure of governance. No, it's not no. a failure of governance. For me, it's the you know, is the beauty of democracy that the president no. is listening to Nigerians, okay? The president is listening to other arms of government like the National Assembly and stuff like that. You know what that. governor's he's expert will tell you? That is what a, will they tell me? That they will say to you that when you flip-flop like that, it does look like you are not strategic in your decision and your policy. No, no, no. I, 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 I don't agree with that. When you flip-flop like that, it means that you are trying to get the best for the people. And that's it. Let me tell you something. If you are a medical doctor or if you are a mechanic, can you flip flop in an in, in in carrying out a surgery on the heart of a of a patient and say, okay, if I make a mistake, I will go back and reoperate it. That example that example, you know, that instance is not applicable. It's applicable. You know why I should tell not. you? Do you know how many you people it's a, it's may have applicable. died? I don't have the figures. They are do in terms of how governance affect the lives and livelihood of the people. Do you know how many people who have lost their jobs based on that subsidy must go uh, statement? Do you know how many people may have died because of that? Do you know how many people that their lives have been impacted directly based on that decision? And you say, oh, I'll go back. And there are millions of Nigerians that their lives have been impacted positively as a result of that decision. There are millions of Nigerians that uh, their life have been affected negatively. And the good thing is that the president understands and feels the pains of Nigerians. That is why he always, oftentimes, he always appeals to Nigerians to be patient with him. Look, like I said, patient? Mr. President inherited a battered economy and he need to revive the world. economy the policies he's putting in place will revive you know or have revived the economy we need to be patient with mr president policies we need to be patient so that this battered economy you know this economy that would, was in coma will pick up let me it ask you a question Mr. let me take it, let me ask you a question uh, and I, i'm very sure that you have taken up uh, paid employment before definitely so if you are, for example, an entrepreneur and you are uh, uh, an employer of labor, would you employ someone who is trying on the job? Who is trying what? Who, who is trying out with you? You employ somebody and he says, oh, let's, let's for example, uh, you, you own an airline uh, or you buy a private jet and you employ a pilot and the pilot tells you, sir, don't worry, I'm a fantastic pilot, but don't worry. Sometimes I might flip flop with my land in this Red Sea, uh, but don't worry, I can try again when we land. I will fly the other one. 
would you would you take that kind of risk? She don't bring example <laughs> that is not applicable. In we employed no, and we no, gave no, a job to no, the no, moment. No, it's the same. same. Just <laughs> remember, we employ President Tunubu. We are paying him. He campaigned for the job. He said he went into an interview, and that is a campaign. He told Nigerians he will get the job done. But when you flip flop on the job, you have failed the people, your employers, which are the Nigerian people. What if it's you a see, job or a decision that you cannot, you don't have a second chance, Mr. Alancha? You see, the problem Nigerians or most analysts have is the fact that they expect a magic wand. But in the in aspect of governance, you, you don't apply the magic wand. These are things that will pick over time. You need to give up, I mean, time for certain policies, you know, to... To, to begin to yield the positive result that is expected to be. So what, 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 it's not something that will so happen let, 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 let's put it It's on. something that over time, as we continue to implement them, we begin to receive the result let, let, gradually. I will ask but you four questions. Want, hold quickly, on, hold quick on. Four, four questions. Quickly, right. quickly. The first question will be, Mr. Alancha, is your life better from May 28th and now? My life is better. You have more money in your bank. I won't say I have more money in my bank, but I'm satisfied with where I am and with what I have. In I'm terms of the I'm life and the life, I mean, uh, I'm uh, living condition and the standard of living in this country, is your life better? Show I am a farmer and I can tell you we are doing better. Okay. Let me ask you. My second question would be, um, do you by any means um, do any trading that involves the dollar? Well, uh, I don't. But you know what the dollar rate was before this government comes into office. Tell me, what is it? But you know. I know. What is it today in the parallel market? You see, that is why we said one of the decisions that Mr. I'm, President I'm taking by, unifi by, unifi by unifying mm -hmm. the market uh, forex ex ex exchange rate, mm -hmm. you understand, is something that is common because you will agree with me that our foreign, you know, the forex, yeah. okay, was not you know uh, <laughs> you understand and he floats the naira let's have let's repose confidence on mr president that is going to work i was one right of those now, persons the naira is mr Alancha, when when the dollar down, went from about 1520 and it came down to about a, a, a thousand two hundred there about i was one of those who say we're seeing the effect of the decision of this government but guess what in less than two weeks or about two weeks, the dollar went back to about a thousand five hundred. It does look like whatever thing that is being done is just cosmetic, and that's why I'm giving you, I'm asking you basic, uh, real life questions that has to go down to the indices to measure the economy. Inflation rate, what was it like? Unemployment rate, what was it like? Food inflation, what was it like? Headline inflation, what was it like? Before this government took into office, and now that they are there, exchange rate, what was it like? Uh, external reserve, what was it like? It has depleted. These indices are in the negative. When President Tunubu took office in the last one year, every of the economic indices in this country has gone in the red. Like I said, Mr. Shum, this decision is not something that will work like a magic wand. It's something that will take time. You just allude to the fact that two weeks ago when the dollar came to 1,002, you agree with Mr. President that that decision was necessary, but it went up again. Now, there are other factors that we need to begin to consider for this dollar to be stabilized to a level that we all can say, yes, this decision was okay. And Mr. President is doing something about it, which is production. Yes. The productivity level of Nigerians, I believe, has increased tremendously. Like I told you earlier, I am a farmer. And I know since uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu took over, you know, I know the level, you know, of my investment in farms. You know, I have I have a fish pond and, you know, I have poultry. I have other things I'm doing. And today, I can tell you that, look, we are not doing very bad. Mm. Let me allow Mr. Shoma to respond. Uh, uh, it does look like some of you, Mr. Shoma, and some of you analysts are not patient at all with this government. And it's unfair, isn't it? Very unfair. Uh, um, so, please, I will beg you, I crave your indulgence. I was looking at my time. You gave my colleague 20 minutes to flip-flop. Please. 
crave, I crave your indulgence to also give me 20 minutes of flip flop. Uh, since we are we agree that flip flopping is the beauty of democracy. Um, to puncture all that have been said, first and foremost, it is a very difficult thing to defend this government because you know, when you say, okay, the, the president is doing something, so there will that will grow the economy. What is that specific thing that the president is doing that will make me say the economy is growing? Nothing. Nobody is mentioning anything. You say uh, farming, fish, and uh, what? Are we, are we better in, rice, in terms of rice production? Are we better in terms of maize? Are we self-sufficient in terms of food? Our farmers have left the farm because insecurity is on the increase. So what are we doing in terms of all of those ones? Nothing. So we also talked about um, first subsidy. Let's look at subsidy as a whole. Buhari said they only budgeted till June. But President came and from May yanked it off. The question now is, what were we doing? What were we doing that we're not doing well? Was there really subsidy? In, in, in um, Saudi Arabia, the cost of producing a barrel of food, the cost of producing a barrel of crude is certain in dollar. Do you know why I show? Because the pipelines, the pipelines are static, the pipelines are protected. As I speak to you, Nation, Russia builds pipelines from Russia to Europe to supply gas to Europe. They don't have time, these are many time to guard the pipelines. But when you use badges and then you also pay militants to guide your pipeline, it adds to the cost of production of your crude. So that's why the cost of producing crude in Nigeria is between $35 to $55 per barrel. That's production. So I'm talking about refining. So if you are refining, you are producing the crude at $35, 55, $35 to $55. And then you take it out to another country. The cost of freighting it out, and then the cost of freighting it back, cost of landing, you are also going to pay, um, what do you call it, um, uh, uh, bridging costs. You pay all of that. At the end of the day, if you look at the cost of landing and the cost of what we are actually buying, you would see that government is actually deceiving itself. That this government pays subsidy one way or the other. But they tell you subsidy is gone. So, because that's what you want to hear. And then, subsidy is gone. Let us take it from that parameter. That yes, we are wasting money. So, as I speak, the same government that was wasting money is telling you that since they removed subsidy, they've had more money to share. So that means the money they were use, using to subsidize before for the entire Nigeria, they now give it to a few people. They give governors more money. And so the governors do whatever they like with it. We can no longer subsidize for the average Nigeria. Let them suffer. But let the governors have more money. And the governors have more money and they can afford to do whatever they like and nobody's holding them accountable. And the federal government says, no, 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 don't look at us. Look at the governors. They're sharing palliative. The palliative that they're sharing, you don't even have the numbers of people that they're sharing palliative to. In December, they told us they gave bags of rice and nobody saw bags of rice. If not that uh, some of the House of Red members said government gave us bags of rice, government didn't hold one person accountable. That's on one side also. Government took loan, loan, 3.3 billion, paid, paid 65 million dollars at cost of con transaction commission to somebody for, for arranging that loan to show up the Naira so that Naira will not fall. So those, that loan, some of that money, they used to pay debts that, they, let's assume, all these airlines and the rest, they used to pay some of those. And then we now say, oh, yes, we will pay that our obligation. Now, we are, we are certain that the dollar will, dollar will appreciate. But unfortunately, the thing is going back now because we are still not producing enough. It is not fish that we are going to sell to encourage, uh, <laughs> to show up our naira. We need to produce. We need to ensure that what is our capacity? Today, our manufacturers don't even have light. Everybody is running on generator. So I, am, I guess that where you are now in your studio, you are running on generator. So we don't even have electricity to produce. 
that you will say, okay, yes, we have policies to generate, we are generating, and there's policy in place that, you know, in no distance time, we increase our generating capacity so that our manufacturers will be able to manufacture, yeah, the cost of production will reduce, and so we'll not be import dependent. All of that is not in place. And now let's go to insecurity. The roads are bad, so we're all flying now. So at the cost of flying, that's why I'm not in the studio. That's why I'm in Lagos. Thanks to Oyibo people that really made this easy to us for us that we can communicate, or like before. So the roads are bad. The roads are not good. Government is building new one. They are not renovating the existing one. And also, when you look at all of that, farmer insecurity is kidnapping. Now is a, a, a dumb business now. When people are kidnapped, the police is even helpless. So when all of that happens, we're not discussing Boko Haram again. Banditry has taken over. You know, militancy is a normal thing. So when that happens, people leave their farm. People who should be in the farm. I thank my friend there is able to still able to farm. A lot of people have left their farm. And so all of these persons are now depending on the rest of us who are salary earners for handouts. I know how many messages I receive in this show. I wish I could be like my friend who is a PC member. It's not only a PC member that I enjoy this government. So when you put all of this together, and I consistently ask, what is that thing that Mr. President is doing that will give me the impression that, okay, yes, if this policy is in place, by next year, if security will go down, by next year, our capacity to produce refined product or our capacity to refine our crude oil will, will increase. And so we'll be depending on our refinery. As I talk to you, Dangote will not produce fuel in, in, in the near, near future because if the FCC in the re refinery is not working. Our refineries are not good. Nobody should deceive you. What they did was to use spy gas to fly, uh, flare uh, the refinery and then they tell you this crew that you use to, to test run a refinery. And they tell you, yes, we will soon be producing, but we don't have crude. In an oil producing country, your refinery don't have crude for your own, for your own local consumption. So, when you put all of this together, show, and then somebody tells you the government is putting uh, policy in place. And what is that policy? They said, we have um, floated the Naira. We have floated the Naira. Recently, the government also was busted and saying, no, you didn't float the Naira, you are still subsidizing the Naira. Even though they denied it, the moment that came to the open, that was how dollar Naira started depreciating also. So, Sean, there's really, there is really anything anybody can tell Nigerians. Right. Go to the street of Nigerians, there is no fear, there's no diesel. Mm. Dangote, they told us Dangote was selling at uh, 1,000 uh, uh, naira per liter. So, I never see Dangote uh, diesel buy. Right. We are still buying at 1,300 naira per liter. Mm. There is no fear, there's no diesel, there's no light. Yeah. There really? is no money in the pocket. Yeah. And then you're saying that the president said he was going to tax people. Do you tax hungry people? How are we cutting costs? Has the government cut costs? Is that the government has made more money by removing subsidy? They are making more money. But is the government, the more money that government is making reflecting in the lives of people? Rather, the government is not a listening government. Let us deceive ourselves. What the government is doing is what you call your what we call it Joyoje. If this one will enter, this one will enter. So you introduce a policy, so let us test one. And then people come and like, ah, this policy, did you think it true? No, this can work, this can work. They say, hey, okay, please, Shalian, draw it back. Let us see. You they bring another one again. And people say, no, no, this will work, this will work. Quietly. That was how they gave 90 billion for uh Hajj. Nobody's talking about that. A government, a government, a country where people can barely eat. So it is not a listening government. But it's a government that is not thinking its policy true. The same way they didn't think the uh, subsidy issue true. If you think a policy true, there are medium term, uh, uh, there, are, there are short term implementation, medium term implementation, and long term implementation. All, right. All of that, once you roll them out, you already know what you're going to achieve. Right. Because you also would have done, done what they call sampling opinion. Opinion sampling. The government doesn't do that. You mm -hmm. just sit down. And they take uh, some policies from uh, Bretton Wood, from World Bank, forgetting that this World Bank economics only know the hotels in Abuja, Port and Lagos. They do not understand the poverty that dots the villages in our community. They come, they sit down in the hotels, they tell you, no, 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 you can no longer do subsidy, you can no longer, but in their country, they are subsidizing agriculture, they are subsidizing Shema. food heavily yeah. for the people. 
let me quickly because i want i want uh, uh some of our participants uh, and the viewers and listeners wherever on the platforms uh to get your views before we get to the top of the hour and close it uh i mean are you afraid because there was a lot of promises that are being made and i will not judge president to know but whether or not he has uh, the good intention of the country i believe and i imagine that he has great intentions and uh, the, 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 the the intentions to, to get things done are on his mind whether or not those intentions and the actions are really generating the right result that is one thing because i'm very much passionate about this country and one thing that i'm thinking about is how this country can be better are you worried that perhaps some of these policies are not generating the right result or there are uh there are fifth columnists in the government or there's just something that just a curse that is not making these governments work to show in the lives on the livelihood of this country or something is fundamentally wrong are you worried about that well uh, so no so, so, so no country no country can run with just one behemoth called policy to run across the country the country we have different orientation we have different lifestyles we have have different um, resources and we have different you know threshold of uh, resistance and what you need to do is to look at the segments that will be able to take certain policies that brings us back to restructuring that brings, brings us back to uh, autonomy a financial autonomy to the regions when you look at those regions take lagos for example lagos has a lot of industries lagos can afford to introduce taxes lagos can afford to, to demolish houses and you know still be able to compete but you cannot try that in Benin, for example you can't try that the gov they will vote out that government you can't try you can afford to remove an order in Kano, but you can't remove an order in Benin. so we need to understand that there is no universality in nigeria that you just bring roll out one blanket policy and mm -hmm. say yes this policy should go around yeah there are places that have air in nigeria and there are places with refinery you don't expect people that have oil, for example, to also pay the same price with people that do not have. Mr. So, so when we try to yeah. please everybody, you yeah. want to please everybody, that is why the policies are not working. Let me, let me allow and me when the president were in opposition, quickly, yeah. sorry, so that you the problem. Okay. When the president was in opposition, he understood all of this. Mm -hmm. Like Ilan Mohammed spoke to it, uh, President Bola Tinubu spoke to it, all of them, including the Minister of Finance, all of these people spoke to this issue. Who were the people that opposed stop city removal in 2012? And why did they oppose it? What has changed now? Was there no corruption in subsidy as at that time? Was exist so they also propounded solutions. Why are they not facing the solutions that they threw at, threw at us? And now they just got subsidies gone because you know the web told you you can't pay subsidy for your people, but yet. You are subsidizing your lifestyle. We buy bulletproof cars for you. We buy private jet for you. We pay your children. We pay your wife. We clothe them. And yet, Nigerians that are paying all of these things, you ask them to consistently pay and continually pay. Why? You tell them, we, government cannot give you anything. Okay. So what is the essence of government? And I keep asking. So I want my colleague to show me, tell me those policies that government is doing that you can say a year from now. As, show as I, I can tell you. If we continue like this, there's no hope. Mm. There's no hope for this country. Mr. 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 Alanja, are yeah. you worried? Yeah, I'm, you see, Mr. Shemu, I'm not worried because I have 100% confidence on Mr. President's you know, uh, decision. Are you talking this, because you're a politician? Not, I'm not talking because I'm a politician. Okay, I'm talking because I'm a Nigerian. And I have, you know, concern for Nigeria. And I desire that Nigerian be great. And I believe that under President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, Nigeria will be great. So I believe absolutely in his competence, in his capacity, and his ability to take Nigeria out of the wolves. And that is what he's doing. So, like I said earlier, and I will repeat again, and Mr. President have said it time and time again, that what Nigerians are going through today is a necessary sacrifice that Nigerians must make. It's a price that we must all pay if we want Nigeria to be great and we want the future. What about Nigeria those who are feeling the great. pains right now? A lot of people are suffering. That people is why, are out of jobs. Is, that people, is, people are going through hard times. How is, do you explain that to that them? Is, that is why I said it's a necessary sacrifice 
Mr. President identified with the sufferings of Nigerians. And that is why I said I'm not worried. Because I know because he identified with the sufferings of Nigerians, he's putting up policies that will take Nigerians, you know, out of you know, no a, a shared prosperity. All right. Let me get in a, a few people on uh, X on Twitter uh, to, to give their views. Uh, I like us to, uh, I like to take a few people. And if you make your interventions as fast as possible, I see a few hands here. Uh, Master Chief at Master. Uh, I can see your hand. You uh, you have the floor. Just in about 30 seconds, please. Let us know. Do you, how would you rate the Tunubu government? Do you think it was a bad or good start? Uh, all right, Chair. Good evening. Thank you so much for the opportunity to stay on that. Um, for me, my rating of the present situation is um, zero over 100. So far. But I have a question for the APC guy in the studio, <coughs> all right? Because uh, we always hear about the pain, the sacrifice. I would like to ask him, sir, please, what sacrifice is Tinubu and um, his vice president, his ministers making? Because you guys cannot keep on saying necessary sacrifice where we see the president and his ministers that are advancing all over town. That is really what I want to Thank you so much, Master Shi. Uh, quickly, if you can intervene on, on that before I bring the next person, what sacrifice? If you are asking Nigerians to make sacrifices, oh, uh, we need to be patient, we need to make sacrifices. The question is, what sacrifice are the political leaders making? Well, for me, I think uh, our political leaders leaders are making sacrifice the president the other time announced you know a court you know in terms of uh governance you know for example those aid that travels with them and uh, you know uh uh some of certain privileges that they enjoy they no longer enjoy them those are part of the sacrifices you know our leaders are also making but generally we are talking about the general lifestyles of nigerians for example nigerians you know need to you know be patient. In the area of patient is one of those sacrifices that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu expect Nigerians to, you know, to be patient with him and give him at least two years and see where mm. he will take this economy to. But, and the mandate mm. we gave him is four years. Look, by 2027, if you are not too satisfied with his performance, what will you lives. do? You will vote him out. Mm. If you are satisfied, those that are satisfied with his performance will vote him in again but, but do you think that what his, his, his rating right now is dropping because of what is going on in the country well i don't think his rating is dropping okay if you go to other quarters there are people that are rating this government 100 percent. give us example of those quarters where they are rating this government i okay if you come to the farming community now you will i will tell you that we are rating him very high because, for example, some of those interventions he rolled out. If you go to farming community today, you see, you know, we have access to tractors, we have access to fertilizers, we have access to, you know, pesticides, insecticides, you know, you know, that has, you know, improved our production, our yield in the farm. So when you ask a farmer, go to the, my village today, I have about seven hectares of cassava, I mean, ten hectares of cassava farm. I can tell you what, you know, uh, our production, you know, uh, last year we just farming now because we harvested the other one, the the the, the last harvest. So we just uh, uh, farmed uh, another for for the for the for which will be harvested in yeah, in the planting in, season. In, yeah, in this planting season, will be, uh, which will be harvested in uh, by next year April. Okay, I can tell you that our yield in the last farming season was not compared to our yield you know our harvest in 2023 so if you go to the villages today farmers are appreciating the administration because like i told you earlier the interventions that were rolled out interventions my brother was talking about you know interventions you know hearing in some quarters that governors are sharing palliatives here and there and that is true governors are sharing palliatives because those palliatives were given to them in order to help them meet the need of the local people just give me a moment let me get another person on x in uh this is metaphor at david ab615 
and the rest. Uh, metaphor, you have the floor right now. Just about 30 seconds, if you may, give your intervention. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Mr. Kimbaloi. Uh, the only, first of all, Tinubu's, Tinubu's rating is low for obvious reasons. There's a question for the gentleman. Why is it that uh, the APC's government, and I'm talking about from its inception in till now, have not um, introduced these help develop the Nigerian social economy if you look across globe across countries across the globe there are several well-known economic indicators and you find their government formulate policies to strengthen these indicators that indirectly strengthen the health of the people why is it that the APC government none of its policies have help to strengthen these economic indicators. It seems like their policies have always gone to actually frustrate these indicators. If you can clarify that, please. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your intervention. So, Let's get another person so quickly. Let me get uh, a few comments in, uh, some intervention from Ed. And I, I will take some uh, interactions and questions on YouTube and all the platforms too. I see that uh, Atako Eken Komsing uh, was raising his hand earlier. I don't know if he's still there. Or Zamani of Apapa at Zamani of Apapa on X. Your hand is up and you can go ahead with your intervention. Your mic is on. 30 seconds, if you may. Um, good evening. All right. I, I see. Okay. Zamani, go first. Good evening, Sheru. Good evening, Nigeria. Good evening. Yeah. Um, I'm, right now, I'm on the street of Lagos. I'm just trying to check around what is going on. It's safe. Yes, people are suffering. For us to raise the government on what has been seen so far, it is very over 100. That's what I think. Uh, it seems well we're out maybe we can hear you any longer but uh, i don't know if at all akon comes in is still there yes please i'm here good please, evening go ahead. thank you so much 30 seconds so if you can give us your intervention thank you all right okay so um my name is akon um i'm the vice um chairman of the a new political movement that is aiming to capture political power this uh, election here in Ghana. The, the man that spoke, that, uh, and the man, uh, the, the other man asked question. We made a point that Nigerians should make sacrifices for Tinubu to, to, to deliver. I am a Ghanaian, but if I'm working in out of ten, I will give you zero. Why? No, the yeah, Ghanaian. What, what? How much? How much do you know about the Nigerian politics or governance? I'm, okay. I'm a politician myself, so okay. I don't read only politics in, in in Ghana. I read politics in Africa and and then Europe as well. So, so I will rate Tinubu zero out of ten. Why? Now, to answer the sacrifice that the man said that Nigerians should sacrifice for Tinubu, that uh -huh. now the best sacrifice Nigerians gave Tinubu is that they allowed themselves. I mean, they accepted the defeat of uh, uh, Peter Obi. So that is the best sacrifice Nigerians gave Tinubu. And now Tinubu is the president. Look at, look at, look at, look, 
look at the uh, uh, of, of the country. Look at the corrupt, corruption corruption index of the country. The best Nigerians can do, just as we indicated, is to keep on enduring the corruption, the hardship of Tinibu. Nothing is going to change. All right. And I will encourage Nigerians that if you want the betterment of the country, we should give the country to uh, Peter Obi. All these aged politicians thing for the country, even including my own president. Uh, I what I will say. Thank you so much for this. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let's make it brief and straight to the point. Let me take uh, Sonny at Rose Ogba One on X. Uh, if you're there and your mic is on right now, 30 seconds if you may shoot your intervention. Yeah, I'm here to show. Um, thanks for doing that. So I, I was just, I was just having to explain to you. So you, you need to speak to someone because it's echo. Both of them are speaking when the speaker is speaking. So they can be so yes, directly. You don't mind. Okay, thank you so much. We we work on that. Yeah. So um, um what I'm trying to say is that um, so please just allow that speaker to speak because I'm hearing myself. I don't. I don't allow. All right, let me quickly go to um, YouTube. I'm seeing a lot of messages and a lot of questions and comments coming from YouTube. I'll take quite a few. Um, let me take uh, one coming from Coyote Unite. He said, it is absolutely ridiculous nature of this even being a conversation at a fact meeting. He says, uh, allow you. Uh, there's been a lot of reactions and uh, it seems you, people on YouTube are having a few days because they are, they are in a in a community of their own and they are having fun having these interactions uh this topic is generating um so uh emmanuel irimore says you expect nigerians to make sacrifices but the political leaders are not making sacrifices people like dominic are the sacrifices around government yes man i'm praise singers so apologies i i wouldn't take that for my guest um uh, Linus is praising uh, Oshoma. He says, I love my adult people. We're always speaking the truth. Uh, uh, Chike Okoye says, and a bag of rice is 68,000 naira. Um, Baba Lakoso said, Naso Buari go form fake rice pyramids. And um, I want to take one or two or more. Um, he say if you rate this administration high in the agricultural sector, then your food is inflation is why is your food inflation so high? Um, okay. Uh, and Anthony Ini says, My question is, must a government tax the people? Can't they farm? All right, let me take one or more people on X. Uh, and I'm seeing some messages on Instagram. If you can keep it coming so that I can um i can take them and have my uh, guests speak about them i can see diamond praise a diamond akwegbe underscore akwegbe on twitter your mic is on diamond if you can just shoot in 30 seconds all right all right thank, thank you um show good evening good evening yeah good evening to anyone uh, to everyone that is listening all right so a quick one um first of all i I would say um, Tinibu's, if I want to assess Tinibu's um, administration in the one year from now, I, I think it's, it's zero, over, zero over 10. I mean, for someone who, is, for someone who, um, who rates Tinibu's administration and gave Tinibu even two over 10 is, I mean, is, is something to comment about because I don't see anything at all that will make someone to even give Tinubu 1% over 10. And, and, and at this point, please, I'll permit you to, to let me say this. And sometimes I think it's funny when people think they can come and defend Tinubu's administration. This failed administration are not look stupid. Because, because you, 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 can't, you can't pinpoint one thing, one single policies, one thing that Tinubu has done to improve the lives 
of Nigerians, the economy of this country. He has Absolutely done a lot. nothing. He has done a lot. From every sector. Okay, okay. If he has done, uh, please, 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 I stand to be corrected. Tell me one thing, uh, except aside from the aside from the coastal road, which I don't even want to talk talk deep on that because it's, it's a fraud on its own. Aside from that, tell me one thing that Chingu has done. Absolutely nothing. Tell me one thing. If you can tell me two things, two two things that Chingu has done to improve the lives of Nigerians. Very just soon, two you will things. See, just tell me. You will see I'll, over. I'll, I'll, you will see over eleven thousand CNG. You know, buses that will be rolled out that will cushion the effect of transportations, you know, <laughs> to citizens of the country. I am telling you that so today, was, today is, farmers what? are celebrating okay, wait, 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 and smiling sorry, to the sorry, banks sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. government policies. So, what are you talking about? <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Is, 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 in, terms in terms of security, if in terms of security, in terms of security, in terms of security, Mr. Sheu. If we look at President Bola Ahmed Tinubu Renewed Hope manifestos, one of the things, you know, some of the things he's promised is the fact that there is going, he's going to ensure the security that our borders are secured. He's going to ensure that our communities are secured. He's going to ensure that our forests are secured. And see, let me tell you today, those of you that will sit in the city and begin to draw conclusion on what is happening in our local areas, you are getting it wrong. Because until you go to the local area, you don't just sit on your social media and then, you know, you read some of these fake things that are being posted out there and you draw conclusion that that is what it is. That is not what it is. If you go to the local areas today, you you will see that the, our community are more secure than you know president bola ahmed tinubu took over this uh, from this administration yes there are pocket of you know uh, 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 incidents here and there but that is not to say that he's a failure it he has not failed and i, and, 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 and I appreciate and i appreciate Oshoma fact, because he know, said it's not yet in guru know, it's not yet in guru we will get the there right. but the look we must it's a right. gradual process yes. so so like like must so. so. understand that so don't that don't is a gradual process if you can learn on your thoughts if you start the business today, we don't expect the business to just shoot. To education, no, to it takes over. It takes a period of time failure. for your business to grow. Just a moment, gentlemen. Diamond, this man has done has done something. Diamond, if you may land on your thoughts so that we can quickly move on. You think, you think right. people are? You think you are talking to babies in this place, Abi? Right. I, I don't do it. Someone even asks you, okay? Someone, someone asks you a simple question. And I've just told you some of the things that Bola no, Ahmed Tinubu has done as a president since he came on board uh, that has affected the life of Nigeria. Uh, da- Diamond, let me let me take another person on Twitter. Thank you so much, Diamond, for your intervention. Sure. Just a moment. Sure, please. Sure, please. Just a moment. Sure, please. Can I say something? Let me just give me f- some moment please. because just a moment we, because we need to move swiftly. We are getting to the point where we need to close. Uh, but just let let me allow two more persons, please, and I'll come to my guests to get their closing thoughts. But, 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 Shio, I've got me my submission. But, he has to allow me to ask But you, you've, you've held the floor for a while. Me. Okay, go. La, 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 I was saying, land on your thought. Diamond, land on your thought quickly. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, um, just, just, just for the sake of time, let me just go straight up to just two questions. The first one, Timber removes subsidy, right? Please, what did he do with the money he removed from subsidy? You will agree with me that state, state, you will agree with me that state are having more, you know, allocation, you know, since the removal of subsidy (laughs) than they were having during, you know, the regime, the subsidy regime. Look, we need to hold our governors accountable. If you are living (laughs) in Cross River, if you are living in in, 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 in Edo State or wherever you are staying, you need to hold your governors accountable because because they are receiving more resources than ever. Let me, let me, uh, Diamond, thank you so much for your intervention. Let me allow uh, Loriman quickly and also uh, there is someone else that is raising his hand. Loriman, quickly, your intervention in 30 seconds. Uh, okay, the show is showing. Yeah, go ahead, please. We can hear you. <coughs> uh, oh, oh, thank you very much. Uh, if I can, uh, 
like zero over ten because I have my reason. I'm in. I'm in. Seems we'll be having problem connecting with uh, Laurie Man. Let me allow another person. Abling Consort, are you there? No, we, we, we lost you at some point. Are you back? Am I audible? Yes, please go ahead quickly. Yeah, so we don't need a uh, short policies. Uh, we need a policies that can uh, impart the appearance of the enemy. Uh, right from the point, what I feel the president has been doing, from the removal of foreign security and the substituted with palliatives and seekers. Uh, something that more than 200 million people have done. But what we see present, we have not seen any policy that impacts the enemy presently right from the bottom to the top. But if I may present this address, I can give it a zero over 10. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Let me take ABL, uh, AB Clean Consult at Abraham5319730 on Twitter. 30 seconds if you give us your intervention, yeah. please. Okay, I'll do it at my less than 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> All right. Good evening, Jerry. So good evening, everyone. <clears throat> I, I think I share your 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 guess is not really saying the truth. I think it's uh, I was I'll look at it in the form of a psychopath. So I'm very sorry to say that because. Nigerians are no, no so apologies. You know, you, you know that, that would be insulting. You have your opinion. I have my opinion. So, so because I invited him to this uh, program, to to just for a moment. Sorry, problem. sorry. Apologies. I mean, when we are having, just for a moment, Abel comes out. Uh, you might not agree. You might disagree, and I might feel differently from how you feel. Doesn't make me get some insult from because of my views. So. Because I invited him on this platform, I, I wouldn't. I would like to protect him. Please, kindly, uh, not okay. insult him, please. Okay, Thank sorry, I'm very sorry about that. But I, I want him to listen and listen to Nigeria carefully because we are saying the, we are saying the way it is in real life. Go ahead. Hello, are you there? Be concerned. Oh no. Ah. All right. So let's get some uh let let's bring this conversation home now. Let me okay. allow let me allow Mr. Oshoma to give us his closing remark. From all of this, one thing that is paramount is the interest of the Nigerian people and the interest of our country. Uh we've handed uh, the, 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 uh, the, the leadership of this country into the hands of President Tunubu. And for four years, that's the mandate that he has. He's in control. He's in charge. Uh, as a Nigerian, how we want him to succeed because he's in the interest of our nation. You may not like him. You may like him. But the fundamentals is that he needs to succeed. This one year, you've rated him badly, poorly. And you said that he's done poorly. Going forward, what do you think in this government needs to be doing? And how do we move forward as a people? Mr. Shoma, your closing remark. Yeah, thank you, Shom. Um, You see, when a leader, Mordini said, when a judge sits on trial, the judge is on trial. When a leader, that's why we don't call them rulers, we say leaders. If they are leading, at every point you need to look behind you to see that the people you are leading are also following and are happy following you. But what we have basically is that the president is aloof. The people that are supposed to tell him that, oh God, things are not going well, are telling him, yes, he's doing well. Despite the heavy voice you're hearing from Nigerians today, they say, voice for police, voice the room. So what the government should do all of this is enough, enough of propaganda, enough, enough of ego massaging. Let the government sit back and look back and say, constitutionally, you want to roll out buses. To who? Is it only Abuja that is the role of Nigeria? Let us look at Nigeria and say, how do we ensure that we restructure this Nigeria to be financially, let the regions be financially independent. But in doing that, this idea of sharing money, more money to government, the money that 200 million people are enjoying, 
you give it to a government, you give you give it to governors who are emperors, you give it to Hajj. Why don't let we find a way to reintroduce this subsidy this time and clean up, making clean up the process? Money that Nigeria is supposed pro to enjoy, you are giving it to governors. You are we, not giving it to governors, you are giving it to their state. So this will you allow me? I allow you, you allow you to tell your talk. Please ah, allow me. Uh, if you are jumping into my talk, it's like you, know, you are you don't want me also to have an opinion. Show defended you just now. Show defended you, Mr. Allow, allow me allow me to go. Uh, no, you will have your call. If you are doing this, moment. if you are doing this, Mr. Shema, please show please, 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 please defend me. Please defend me. Because you know these CPC people. All of the three candidates that said they would remove subsidy. I didn't support either of them because it's like telling me you can't do the work. The government need to go back, look at the subsidy regime, clean up the subsidy regime, look at how we are protecting our pipelines, how do we introduce technology to pro protect our pipelines, to be able to shore up our reserve so that we can have more money. The regime, you can't say something has corruption and so you just jettison it. And then take the money that is meant for everybody and give to 32 people or 36 people. You need to look at that process again, clean up the process, ensure, even this fight against corruption, this behemoth called the FCC is not working. Come work. We need to find a way to own it. Nigeria, as we speak now, it's like anybody that comes, you just do a bracadabra. Until government sit down and look at these three areas that I mentioned. You can't run away from giving subsidy. There is no way you can run away from it when you are not producing. You are not producing, and yet you say you don't want to subsidize. Until your refineries are working and your cost of producing uh, crude is minimally reduced because your, your depots and your pipelines are okay, you cannot remove subsidy. But as we speak now, you cannot afford not to subsidize for your people. That's basically what I'm saying. And so going forward, let the government ensure that our cost, our production, are put everything in place to ensure that production is maximized so we have more money. The corruption that they say they are fighting, let us have a human face in fighting corruption and let our local refineries actually work and protect, let's use technology to protect our pipelines and Clean up the corruption from the subsidy. Introduce no subsidy until your refineries are working. Right. We are clean on subsidy while we are subsidizing your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. People will continue to suffer as I speak to you. Dollar will continue to grow. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Shoma. Mr. Lancher, your Shem, closing Shem, I believe that the president is focused at redirecting the economy, you know, by removing the impediment that have stampeded, you know, the growth of our economy in order to create jobs for Nigerians. And you see, I mean, as it I'm people. rating this government, you know, if it's 100, mm -hmm. I'm rating them 80. 80 because I know it's not yet Uhuru. We will get there. All we need to do is to continue to support. Yeah. And you see, let me say, oh, this, Mr. Show, Nigerians need to begin to think of solution. What are you bringing to the table? One of the United States presidents said, don't think of what the, your country can do for you. Think of what you can do for oh. your country. So, what are the solutions? If you think that pipeline vandalization is the problem and there is need for us to put up a structure that will monitor it, you know, digitally or technologically, why don't you look at the agencies that are in charge and come up with proposals and come up with solutions to them and see if they will not attend to I have. So I I, have. I think Nigerians should begin to think of what, you know, the solutions to the mirage of challenges that are confronting Nigerians because that is what the president is thinking. He's thinking of the solutions, you know, to profit from the many challenges that are going, you know, that we are facing as a nation. So, like I said, the president is focused. Our economy is beginning to pick up and politically there is stability. So, I am rating him. 80 over 100 because we are not yet there but before right. 2027 or 2026 rather we will get there mr dominic alancha a member i will remind you see uh mr liberos oshoma a lawyer and a social commentator thank you so much indeed for your time tonight gentlemen look this is very important for our nation we need to we cannot we've 
kept quiet in past government thinking that let's give them a chance and at the end of the day we met ourselves very much in the bottom of 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 of, of the earth and discovered that our nation was almost collapsing now we cannot afford as a people and as a journalist as a lawyer as an entrepreneur whatever you may be doing as a nigerian we need to speak up help this government and make them succeed that's the only way we all can collectively succeed thank you so much everyone for joining us on this episode of my com podcast the scorecards are in and opinions are divided are nigerians asking for too much or do they need a president with a magic wand certainly not as we reflect on president balatinobu's first year in office what is the state of agriculture infrastructure education security and other vital aspects of our lives with the hope of the people be renewed as a promise some of the contributions made tonight are that all hope is not lost even amidst the perceived low rating of the current administration will president Tinubu get it right in the next year or years i sincerely hope so unfortunately modern hope is needed and here is where we anchor the show Join us next time as we continue to explore the issues that matter most to you as a Nigerian. I'm Shua Kimbale, and this has been the Macon Podcast. Thank you for being part of this program. Bye for now, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Mike on Podcast with Shayono Kimbaloi. Mike on Podcast for the independent mind. <laughs>